The Siege of Neverwinter returns, along with a few other very useful events. Let's go over how you can make the most of them. So initially, we have that Siege of Neverwinter. Now, you want to make sure that you get that 21 days of progress. Now, you only have 22 days if you squeeze in the time to get this fully completed. So every day, you want to be going over to this guy and picking up well, initially, the quest from this person. But once you gain access to that area, you won't have to go back here again. Basically, she will lead you to the siege, which is this area, the siege battlefield. Once you're here, it's very simple. You just speak to this girl here and uh, hand that in and then accept the everyday quest, Siege of Neverwinter. All you will have to do is complete heroic encounters. Now, I don't know why it says zero out of 100. I hope to God that's not the case. But we go to the heroic encounter and uh, let, let's see. Do we really have to complete 100 heroic encounters every day? That would be a freaking joke. They may well have really broken it. But when you kill enemies, you'll also get these vouchers, which you want to save for Stronghold Week. So you'll get a bunch of them there. You just kill enemies and they have a chance to drop. Now, I believe it will depend on like other people in your instance. And it seems to be like capped at basically how many can drop over a certain period of time. And so if there's multiple people here, you're all kind of competing with basically the drops. So you generally want to find an empty instance. Well, this heroic is fairly simple. The enemies keep spawning. There's some more vouchers. Make sure to save those vouchers rather than donating them to your guild cost for right away. Save them for when you look on the calendar, the actual stronghold week, which is going to be double guild marks, double influence times two shards of power. And that's just February the 23rd. So that's next week. So you can do a bunch of farming of these vouchers for that. With them defeated, we kill the raid leader. And that should be that. There we go. He's gone. And yeah, that's the heroic beat. And so that was considered 20 out of 100. Interesting. All right, they've made it a lot easier with now the requirement just being to complete heroic encounters. Doesn't matter which ones they are. Like, I don't have to go now and kill this solo dragon like by myself. It's going to be a bit challenging. He's a five star enemy and got a ton of HP. So I can just wait a little bit. Wait for like another heroic encounter to spawn. We started that one just in case uh, basically the timer can tick over and uh, the heroic will fail and be gone. And we can wait for another heroic. But that is very good to see. And those those ones with the dragons probably will consider more points, probably like 40 points each, whereas these smaller ones are only 20 points. But you need to complete that Siege of Neverwinter quest every week. I'm not sure why we have two of those quests. Actually, I know why. One of them will be a repeatable quest you can do every day to, on a chance, obtain an additional token because you can obtain a maximum of two per day. You guaranteed obtain one on the first pack you open, and that will give you the progress you need to uh, get on the, the progress tracker. That's this one right here. We have zero out of 21. So we're just going to wait for some more heroic encounters to spawn. But meanwhile, let's speak about the other current active events. Make sure you take advantage of those. And that is times two to currency of legacy campaigns. So now is the time to be spending genie gifts on these legacy campaigns to basically complete them nice and quickly. Additionally, you can spend some genie gifts on Dreadring to be able to get more of these, let's say, scripts to get more Thean Lair keys. And that way you can do more Thean Layers, getting those uh, different enchanting stones. I would recommend looking up a video for that. And basically you get a pouch here and you'll get twice as many scripts. So you get 30 instead of 15. And that's like that for all the rest of the legacy campaigns. If we need to get some currency for Jungles of Chalt, then we can do that as well. Just be careful of which ones you buy here. Like if we buy the idols there, because let's say we want some keys as well, we can go and do that. And yeah, genie gifts will probably go up in price now during this times two event of everything. Just be aware of that and uh, yeah, just be smart. And you could, I believe, spend uh, genie gifts also on Valenhas 
to be able to get the crests if you wanted those to complete the progress, but you won't get any of like the writings. And of course, you can just do your quests for those campaigns. They all have like repeatable quests you can do for getting the currency, you can progress on them, get their boon points, etc, etc. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Take your time. No need to rush it. No need to spend tons of astral diamonds unless you literally don't want to do a single quest for it. Then maybe. Um, but only if you're min-maxing does it really matter to have these boon points. They are minuscule bonuses of like 0.2%. You can see per boon point there. So not something that's a big deal whatsoever. Now, on top of that, we also have then times two seals. And this is when it gets really important to do like your Reaper's challenge, because this will give you two seals per day instead of just one. And that's pretty handy. We'll go over that in just a sec as we're going to go and complete dragon attack. What? Why do we have two dragons? No, dragon attack. Is that really... Yeah, oh my god. Now we have two dragons here. So my best bet, I don't want to go beat him solo, is to just leave here and reset the instance. I'm alone here, I believe, so that should work. But with times two seals giving twice as many Reaper marks, you really should be doing that. And now it's only FBI, Fanbreaker Island. Just be aware that the Reaper's challenge will be a little bit more, yeah challenging it is a challenge because it will have like no consumables no artifacts no mount powers and on top of that the dungeon is scaled up to like 50,000 item level and so the enemies are a lot tougher of what you would get within let's say the random dungeon queue or just the normal dungeon here where the item level would only be 25,000 so it's like twice as difficult make sure you have a decent group going in I would go in as a pre-made group so you would invite people go private and queue for your reapers challenge don't go waiting publicly sitting in the reapers challenge hoping for other people to join the public queue as well that's just not gonna work guys now those reaper marks are really valuable because you can spend those in this store right here in protector's enclave you can get your companion and mount upgrade tokens i would recommend getting trade bars at the time of which you have the trade bar discount and then buying the tokens but it's still viable to spend them to get the tokens if you really need them then and there. Otherwise, there's some prez wards. I wouldn't worry about that. Genie gifts, I wouldn't worry about them either. But you very well might want to save for these companion choice packs. Because within that, you can get the account-wide Bateri along with the account-wide Tamed Velociraptor. The Raptor is like one of the end game companions you'll see all those pre-made groups using. So to get into those groups, you very well would want to have a Raptor and the Bateri will just be that big bonus against uh, your bosses of 11%. Not something you want to miss out on as a damage dealer. The rest of the items from this store, yeah, you got shards. You got these greater shards you could spend them on to then uh, upgrade collars. That's very viable. And you could upgrade those collars and then go on to sell them. Yeah, it's just quite a grind to get the ones you need. Do not buy epic colors here you can buy those off the auction house for dirt cheap so that's it for the reapers challenge just every day it will rotate depending on the content and also the challenge conditions so that it shakes things up a bit you aren't doing the same thing then every day and uh, again make sure you do your reapers challenge this week throughout at least uh, ideally you want to do it all the time every day but within this week, it's more important because you'll get twice as much value from that. And on top of that, we have Dungeon Delver's Delight. So this is the time now to be running your dungeons, running your trials, skirmishes and everything. Just go find something to farm. You could go and farm like something easy, like Master of the Hunt. Just haven't found it as very profitable. Ideally, now we'd go and do actually like Demogorgon Master or the Rise of Tiamat Master if you have a good group that can do that, just because the sets that drop in there will sell for a decent amount and Dungeon Delvers will just help you give that a little bit more loot. Just make sure you also go and buy those skeleton keys if you do not have them and then demonic keys. But skeleton keys, more importantly, because you can only get a maximum of five of these per day and then you can no longer get them anymore. And you could do that then every day getting five keys. And we have a bunch of keys. I have a backlog. I have a bunch of other keys I can exchange in as well. So it's not a big deal for me, but just be aware. Back in the Siege of Neverwinter, 
we still have both of these heroics. God damn it. But yeah, you'll be basically progressing with this quest. Just doing some heroics. At least this time around, you won't have to wait for like dragons. They used to have it the last time this event came. You'd have to kill two dragon heroics, these big ones. And then you'd have to do three of the smaller ones. At least now, you're only going to have to beat like two dragons and one small one. Or you're going to have to beat five small ones. So makes it a lot easier. People used to be instance hopping. You can still instance hop. Uh, like if you don't have any heroics active in your place and that way you could get this quest done a bit easier but again it's only once per account that you will do this to get the progress i personally wouldn't worry about doing the the second bonus uh quest just complete the siege of neverwinter quest get the progress on this bar and you're done for the day and once you get to 14 days completed you'll get your token of achievement and then from there on you will get one token of challenge every day when you complete it. Now, if you go back to Protector's Enclave, you'll be able to spend that currency you obtain, either over on this guy a little over there, or this guy who's always going to be here. And these tokens you'll spend in the three store sections. Now, you can see these are the participation tokens. I do recommend just getting like companion or mount upgrade tokens, depending on what you need. You can get these enchanting stones elsewhere, and glyphs, maybe. I would just buy those generally from other players or from the bazaar when there is the discount that can generally be a better option because those upgrade tokens are pretty valuable. For the challenge tokens, you can see that we have a new option to buy a bag of holding. I do not recommend buying those. You can get them from the auction house for not too expensive, like 300k. You want to get like either legendary insignias if you're still progressing your character and don't have like all mythics yet, or you want to be buying overloads for endgame min maxers to complete that challenging content. Achievement tokens, well, it's up to you. I personally would say save them, but if you're really progressing your character and want to get there quicker, then there is cool motes you can use to, let's say, get your enchantments upgraded. A good option would be Staldorf, but I personally don't use him in any of my builds. He is account wide and he is mythic already, so he's got some bolster going for him. But the rest of them, I would only take them as like fashion items. Or if, let's say, you're somebody crazy about getting the golden touch. You can just get the giant toad instead, or you can get your tunnel vision upgraded instead. So I personally don't think it's worth like even two coal moats to get this, or three coal moats to get these. I'm personally just going to save my achievement tokens until they add something new. So again, really nice to see the improvement to the Siege of Neverwinter. Much easier to complete. And make sure you're taking advantage of your times two legacy campaigns if you need to, along with your times two seals with Reaper's Challenge, and then Dungeon Delvers for extra loot. Make sure you're farming those uh, the hardest content you can, pretty much, at least within a reasonable amount of time. Massive thank you again to all of these channel members for their continued support. Support me for as little as one year a month by clicking that join button below. And if I present this well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. See you guys around. Goodbye for now.